<laughs> Hi there, welcome everybody. Thank you so much as always for joining us here today on our webinar. Today we have the chair and the vice chair of the appraiser qualifications board who will be summarizing the board's proposed changes to the criteria. So first I'm going to ask Barry, uh, sorry, Brad and Jerry, I guess I put that together, that makes one person Barry, I'm going to ask Brad and Jerry to introduce themselves now and then I'll do the same. Hello, everyone, and thanks for your time in attending this webinar. I'm Brad Swinney, Chair of the Appraiser Qualification Board. I'm a certified general appraiser with credentials in Kentucky and Texas. Uh, I've been a certified general appraiser for 30 years, and I'm currently based in Texas. Thank you, Brad. Jerry? Hello, everyone. I'm Jerry Urich, Vice Chair of the Appraisal Qualifications Board. I am a certified residential appraiser from Ohio with credentials in Ohio and Kentucky. And I work for a large national lender and I've been appraising for over 35 years. Great, thanks, Jerry. And I'm Lisa Damaris, the Vice President of Appraisal Issues here at the Foundation. And I serve as the technical <coughs> expert to the ASB and the AQB. And I also was an appraiser in the field for 30 years prior to coming to work here full time. Uh, first, we always like to start off uh, with webinar logistics. Few quick, quick housekeeping notes I want to run through. We are recording this webinar and you will see the recording post to our website and our YouTube channel in less than 24 hours. We will take questions at the end of the webinar, but feel free to type those in there at any time. If you'd like to ask a question, move your mouse to the bottom of the screen there and click on Q&A. That's Q&A and type your question in there. It's also not a bad idea to keep your chat box open as we provide links and other information to you as the webinar progresses. So the chat box is located on the bottom as well, located right next to the Q&A button. Now in the past, we had you post your questions in the chat box. This is a change, try and put them in the Q&A box. I will absolutely try and catch those if they get posted into the chat box, but just know that I'm going to be monitoring the Q&A box mostly. Aida is monitoring the chat box, but I will try and pop over there as I can. So do try and put those in the Q&A box. At the conclusion of the webinar, uh, you will get a very, very quick and brief survey. It just pops up. It literally takes less than 30 seconds or to a minute to fill out. If you could just fill that out, we uh, use that feedback to improve our webinars each time that we hold a new webinar. So for our agenda today, we would like to discuss the proposed edits to require fair housing education and a few other areas of changes that are proposed in the criteria. Brad and Jerry are going to explain the rationale for the proposed changes that have been issued by the board. Uh, before I get to Brad, I just want to point out to everyone, we have a newer comment format and how you can uh, have your comments to the exposure draft uh, submitted to the AQB. You can always do them today in the chat box or in the Q&A box as well, but if you probably have longer comments or more formal comments to make, we recommend you use our new comment format. So once you have a copy of your exposure draft on your computer, note that we have redesigned the draft so it's very user-friendly, and you can either email us your comments, and the email address is provided in there, or you can simply click on the comments link that is in that exposure draft and it takes you right into a platform where you can choose to either upload a document with your comments or you can simply type in any of your comments right there. All right, thank you all. Let's get started here. Uh, Brad, can you tell us uh, what the attendees should expect from today's webinar? Thank you, Lisa. Uh, Jerry and I will go over the proposed changes shown in the first exposure draft in detail, and we'll also take your questions. We hope to answer most of your questions with this presentation. The Appraiser Qualification Board is tasked with maintaining the real property appraiser qualification criteria, as well as the personal property uh, appraiser qualification criteria. These documents are updated in response to the needs of clients, intended users, and the public to ensure the criteria in place meaningfully develops and appraisers' professional knowledge and skills. Before going into the proposed changes, I think it's important for you to know how the board got here. Concerns relating to discrimination, fair housing laws, and real property appraisals have become important topics across the housing industry and the appraisal profession. While these are complex issues, many of which go beyond the scope of the criteria, 
a wide range of stakeholders have urged the AQB to require as part uh, as part of both an appraiser's qualifying and continuing education courses on valuation bias and fair housing laws and regulations. The board has been closely analyzing the White House Task Force, known as PAVE, or Property Appraisal and Valuation Equity, uh, their action plan since its release last year. The AQB began analyzing and implementing recommendations made by the PAVE report aimed at rooting out appraisal bias and building public trust. The AQB is proud that much of its ongoing work aligns with the report's recommendations. In response to stakeholders, the board held a public forum in September regarding the need to require fair housing and valuation bias education for appraisers. The board heard from and listened to panelists from various stakeholder groups, including federal agencies, state appraiser regulatory agencies, education providers, professional appraisal organizations, and consumer, and consumer civil rights and fair housing advocacy groups. The board also took public comments. As a summary of that forum, the oral and written comments received from the panelists were largely in full support of requiring fair housing education for current and aspiring appraisers. Following this forum, the board held, the board held a working group to meet with the state appraiser regulatory agencies, professional appraisal organizations, education providers, appraiser coalitions, and consumer civil rights and fair housing advocacy groups to ask questions and receive feedback on what exactly these education requirements should contain. The board then, then drafted the current exposure draft we are discussing here today. That exposure draft, as just noted, evolved after receiving considerable feedback and input from multiple different types of stakeholders. The board issued the exposure draft on January 31st and is currently in its 60-day comment period. The comment period will end on March 13th of this year. Immediately after the draft was issued, the AQB began to seek and receive additional feedback. Groups providing feedback include the Foundation's Advisory Council, which consists of 60 nonprofit organizations and government agencies. From the state regulatory, we also heard from the State Regulatory Advisor Group, which is open to state regulators from all 55 states and territories. Today, Jerry and I will explain the proposed changes in this draft and hopefully either get your thoughts and comments on these changes today, or at least encourage you to submit your comments before the comment period ends on March 13th. Your feedback is of crucial importance to the work we are doing, and we hope you are able to provide comments to the AQB for our consideration. Let's now turn to the first exposure draft and what it is currently proposing. We will start with a very quick overview of three main points to understand when reading the exposure draft. These bullet points are on page number four of your exposure draft if you are following along. The AQB is proposing adding qualifying education and continuing education requirements for coursework in valuation bias and fair housing laws and regulations and revising and updating the name of the, seven, of the current seven-hour national use path update course and the seven-hour instructor recertification course. If adopted shortly after the current comment period ends on March 13th of this year, these changes would become effective January 1 of 2025. The changes would not be able to become effective immediately because as proposed, the additional education requirements will take time for states to successfully implement. The proposed lead time gives all states the time needed to implement these changes. However, states can implement these changes prior to the effective date of the criteria if they so choose. The AQB encourages states to implement these changes as quickly as they are able. Thanks, Brad. I'm looking at the first exposure draft and the proposed change starts with changes to continuing education, which we call CE, CE requirements. Continuing education is the education that appraisers have to complete every so often to be able to maintain their credential. Can you walk us through these proposed changes related to CE? Sure, Lisa. 
Currently, for an appraiser seeking to keep their license or certification current, there are two specific requirements they need to make sure they follow. They need to take a seven-hour USPAP course once every two calendar years, and they need to take the equivalent of 14 classroom or class hours of instruction in courses or seminars for each year of the renewal cycle. So, for example, a two-year continuing education cycle would require 28 hours to be completed by the end of the, of the renewal cycle. The AQB is proposing to change this requirement by adding two distinct continuing education requirements, both of which are related to taking a course where the topic is valuation bias and fair housing laws and regulations. This is on page six of the exposure draft under the heading explanation of proposed changes. The first requirement is the AQB uh, is proposing a period with a specified end date where all licensed or certified appraisers would take an in-depth seven-hour course covering valuation bias and fair housing laws and regulations. After this time period has ended, then for every two-year continuing education cycle, the credentialed appraiser would complete a refresher four-hour course covering valuation bias and fair housing laws and regulations. The reason there are two different requirements proposed is that a seven hour course is enough time to cover the content in detail as outlined later in this exposure draft. And a four hour course is appropriate to cover the same content in a way that is suitable for a refresher course. So why did we settle on seven and four hours? The number of hours chosen for each course are based on existing requirements for several states appraiser regulatory agencies and from the actions and input of ind individuals from other professions who are education providers and who are interested stakeholders. I do want to note that the only difference between the seven hour course uh, mentioned here and the eight hour course, which will come up when discussing qualifying education, is that the eight hour course has one additional hour added for an exam. So in other words, it is the seven hour course plus one hour uh, added for the administration of an exam. Now let's look at the actual proposed language to be added to the criteria. Here it is on your screen, lines 74 through 80 on page 11 of the exposure draft. Thanks, Brad. Jerry, do you wanna tell us a little bit more about uh, implementation? You're on mute, Jerry. Yes, Lisa, the AQB believes it is sensible with respect to public trust in appraisal practice for all currently credentialed appraisers to complete this proposed training as quickly as reasonably possible. While taking into account the natural constraints and differing operations of 50 states and five jurisdictions. These constraints include the need to allow state appraiser regulatory agencies enough time to make any necessary revisions to their laws, or regulations in advance of the effective date. For example, some states meet every other year for rulemaking. The core goal is to ensure every appraiser, new and existing, completes an initial fair housing course as soon as possible. The AQB aim is to accomplish this effort without waiting up to multiple years. Given the reality appraisers are all in different phases of their CE cycles and QE processes. Thank you, Jerry. Now that we have the continuing education proposed language covered, we can dive into qualifying education, which we call QE, that aspiring appraisers must take to become appraisers and to gain their desired credential. Brad, would you like to walk us through the proposed changes for qualifying education? Certainly, Lisa. Uh, the AQB is proposing to add an additional eight hour course requirement, uh, which again is the seven hours of instu instruction plus one hour exam to the list of qualifying education courses for each appraisal, appraisal classification. So trainee, licensed residential, certified residential, and certified general. This core course will provide a baseline of knowledge for all appraisers on the topics of valuation bias and fair housing laws and regulations. If adopted, the eight hour valuation bias and fair housing laws and regulations course must be part of the required QE for aspiring appraisers no later than January 1st of 2025. 
there are multiple areas of the criteria this proposed change impacts. As you can see on your screen, this includes the need to propose a change to the requirement uh, 3E3 to allow the eight hour qualifying education course. Thus, while only one requirement is changing, an eight hour course is being added to all qualifying education requirements. This results in multiple areas of the criteria needing to be edited to reflect the proposed change. We will go through all those proposed changes on the next several slides. Here on your screen, you see the total hours required increasing for the trainee classification from 75 to 83. The same on this slide as well, the hours have increased and we have added the new eight hour class to the required core curriculum and the criteria for the trainee credential. Moving on to the LR. Uh, these two sections of the criteria have proposed changes to increase the hours from 150 to 158. And again, in the core curriculum, we've also added it uh, to the required core curriculum and increased the total hours here. Now for the certified residential and certified general qualifying education requirements. It was possible to propose adding the valuation bias and fair housing laws and regulations course without increasing the total number of hours uh, of qualifying education. This was possible because the APQB is proposing to reduce the total num number of required elective hours accordingly. So both the certified residential and certified general have elective hours, whereas the other credentials do not, making it possible to not increase the hours for these two credentials. Here on your screen, in these sections in the criteria, the electives decreased from 20 to 12. And here in the required core curriculum, the course was added and the appraisal subject matter electives were decreased from 20 to 12. And then lastly, we have a certified general credential where we took the same approach of decreasing the appraisal subject matter electives from 30 to 22 in these sections of the criteria. And we also proposed the same changes to, to the required core cur curriculum where we added the course and decreased the elective hours. And that is the end of the proposed changes to the qualifying education. Super, thank you, Brad. So we've now reached the question that I know many are asking, and that is what content is proposed to be required in this course? And can you please lead us through the course outline for the evaluation bias and fair housing course? Uh, yes. So let's talk about the purpose of having an outline and then how we developed one. The goal of this proposed outline is to provide high quality, consistent, uniform education for all appraisers on the topics of valuation bias and fair housing laws and regulation. The panelists at the AQB's forum to explore education requirements Fair Housing Laws and Valuation Bias Education, or the forum, provided written answers to one of the AQB questions to list the required topics for the course. The AQB received and reviewed the extensive list of topics for the course content. The AQB revert, reviewed current course content outlines available on this topic for their required content from various state agencies and education providers. The AQB also received comments from stakeholders at various meetings and speaking engagements, such as the Appraisal Foundation Advisory Council, the Industry Advisory Council, and the Association of Appraiser Regulatory Officials. The AQB asked for greater feedback from the pre-exposure draft working group. The working group's comments further refine the required content outline. Lastly, the AQB received advice from fair housing attorneys on the required content outline. The outline starts with saying that the course must contain information to ensure the appraiser understands valuation bias and fair housing laws and regulation related issues. The same outline is required for the seven hour course, the eight hour course, which again is the seven hour course plus a one hour exam, and the four hour course. 
However, the four hour course will have less content on the topics of understanding real estate bias and federal fair housing laws and regulations, and more content on valuation bias and case studies. It then sets out required course content. The course outline starts with understanding what is real estate bias. The board felt that it was important to provide historical content, context and background, which should include the sub-bulleted topics on your screen. Then it moves to contemporary context, which should discuss the economic impacts, public conversation, and recent cases. Then the course gets into the laws and regulations. The board felt it important for the course to cover the federal fair housing and anti-discrimination laws and regulations. This section should cover the six laws you see on your screen. The board also felt it to be important for the course to discuss valuation bias and the various components of valuation bias. After identification of various biases, the next section would then discuss how to recognize and avoid valuation bias. Lastly, the board thought it important to have discussions of case studies on current valuation bias topics, as well as best practices for avoiding valuation bias. Great. Thanks, Brad. Uh, we have one more guide note that has proposed edits. That's guide note one, which we also call GN1. Uh, Jerry, can you please tell us how the guide note one would be changed? Yes, thanks, Lisa. Assuming the above changes are adopted, guide note one will need to be updated to reflect those changes for consistency. Here on your screen, you can see the proposed addition of the course outline Brad just discussed as being added to the Guide Note 1 for qualifying education. Guide notes consist of guidance only and therefore do not contain any criteria requirements. The edits to Guide Note 1 will consist of adding a high level required content outline in a format that is consistent with how the guide note is formatted. Therefore, the outline in the Guide Note for the Valuation Bias and Fair Housing Laws and Regulation Course Outline is necessarily more abbreviated than it appears in the criteria. The criteria contains the full requirement to be met, and the guide note contains a condensed outline, which is consistent with the formatting of guide note one. Here on your screen, we are also proposing rewording the title to ensure consistency with the new proposed course. Thanks, Jerry. Uh, we've now come to the last section of the exposure draft, the proposed changes to course titles. Jerry, do you wanna tell us a little bit about these proposed changes? Yes, of course, Lisa. The board is proposing changes to both the seven hour national USPAP update course and the seven hour instructor recertification course, also known as IRC. Let's start with the seven hour national USPAP course first. Some quick historic background on this course. The first AQB approved seven hour national USPAP update course became available on January 1st, 2003 and was the result of the AQB concluding after receiving stakeholder feedback that there be a requirement for appraisers to have ongoing continuing education in the professional ethical and competency standards of USPAP. The purpose of the course has always been to provide ongoing education on the principles and requirements of USPEP and to present and explain any updates made from one edition to another. To better reflect the intent and objectives of the course, the AQB is proposing to change the name of the course to Seven Hour National USPEP Continuing Education Course. Now moving on to the Seven Hour Instructor Recertification Course. For some of our listeners who don't know about this course, this is a great chance to explain the purpose of the course. The goal of the course is to keep instructors up to date so they can continue to be qualified to teach USPAC courses, which is often accomplished in less than seven hours. Originally, when the course was only held in person, it was a seven hour course. However, when the course moved to begin only an asynchronous course, it can end up being less than seven hours in length. 
The course has evolved over the years and is currently often fewer than seven hours in length. So under 3F12 of the criteria, the AQB is proposing the removal of seven hour from the title of the seven hour instructor recertification course. Removing the words seven hour from the title more accurately reflects what the course is and that the number of hours is not the key objective of the course. Perfect, that was a great explanation. Thank you both uh, Jerry and Brad for taking us through the exposure draft. Uh, so I see we have a lot of questions coming in here. Um, I am going to go through them and just direct them to each of you. But if you want to hand it off to the other, if either of you has more to add to it, that's fine as well. Let me see here. The first question I'd like to ask is, uh, Brad, instead of adding a requirement for a course that teaches fair housing laws and how to apply those laws in appraisal assignment, assignments, why not just change the current USPAP class so that it teaches appraisers how to tie fair housing laws and practical application of these laws together. So, you know, tell the appraiser how to complete an appraisal assignment that is subject to fair housing laws. Thanks, Lisa. Um, any course that uh, teaches a specific topic, be it teaching how to complete the cost approach or how to appraise a golf course or how to follow state laws when reporting on an appraisal, it's a topic that is related to methods and techniques. Uh, USPAP does not mandate which methods or techniques an appraiser must follow for any specific assignment because there are too many unique variables between all the different types of assignments. Um, and because USPAP does not mandate methods and techniques, the courses cannot tell the appraiser how to follow any particular method. Thus, for example, uh, regarding fair housing laws and how to apply them, this is a topic appraisers would learn uh, better in a course that is meant to teach the topic, not in a course that teaches the principles and concepts of use path. Okay, thank you, Brad. Uh, this one I will uh, give to Jerry. Jerry, if I take the seven hour course and then I wanna upgrade my, upgrade my credential, does the seven hour course satisfy that requirement or do I have to now go back and take the eight hour course? Thanks, Lisa. So since the uh, question is related to a credentialed appraiser, this credentialed appraiser would not have to take the eight hour course, which includes the exam. So the seven hour course that they've taken already would satisfy the requirement. Perfect. Thanks, Jerry. Uh, Brad, was there, was there any consideration given to the states that already provide or mandate courses and how did how would this affect that? Uh, so there there was consider consideration given insofar as you know many of those courses were looked at as we developed our outline. That said, uh, the way it will affect them is that they must or they will have to uh, adjust, their outlines to include all the content in the AQB um, indicated outline in our core curriculum. Okay, and since you just answered that, Brad, I'm gonna ask you a follow-up question because it relates to that. And that is, my state now requires that I take CE on these topics. Oh, the state already requires the person to take CE on these topics. If I have taken a similar course, does that count? It does not. Okay, Jerry, um, will the AQB be developing these courses? No, the AQB is not a course provider. We will not be developing these courses, but of course we are you know, establishing through this exposure draft the content requirements uh, so for, for these courses, but uh, of course the education providers themselves will be developing the courses. Okay. Who, who are the entity who are the entities that provide these courses and are there enough courses on the market for these topics or do you expect more courses to become available is that directed to me or Jerry? oh sorry Brad yes Brad that's for you oh okay uh, I, I am currently aware of, of a couple of education providers I know both the appraisal Institute and McKissack have courses in this topic area, and that there are also states that require teaching of, of these courses. 
currently uh, New York, California, and Ohio, for instance. Uh, that neither of those lists is is you know all encompassing. Those are the ones that I'm I'm aware of through our our research. Uh, that said, given the time and the fact that this would be required qualifying education and continuing education, uh, yes, the course providers will have time to to uh, put these courses together um, and in order for appraisers to be able to take them and be in compliance. Okay, and then uh, follow up, but I'll give this one to Jerry. So do you think, um, Jerry, that there's enough content to have, for example, in the four hour class? every two years on this topic? We do think there is enough content. Of course, as uh, new case law comes about or new case studies that can be developed and new topics on valuation bias and fair housing uh, come up, um, we feel that there should be certainly enough uh, content for a, a four hour continuing education course uh, every two years. Okay, we're well, getting a lot of questions here about hours. And I think one question that would help, um, Brad, if you want to clarify this, is the number of hours, for example, the licensed residential, it, you have it proposed for going from 150 to 158. Are those number of hours actual hours, as in 60 minutes per hour, or are those semester hours, as in, as in how a college would define those? Oh, well, that's a good question. Uh, when, when we talk about an hour in the criteria of you know, for instance, uh, 50 minutes of classroom instruction equates to one hour. So we're talking about actual hours. You, we're not talking about eight semester hours. Okay, so then 158 hours would be actual hours, 158 hours, so a little over three weeks full time being in a classroom. Yes. Okay. Um, Brad, another one for you. As a certified residential appraiser, I would have to complete the seven hour course by the end of 2025. If my state license is up for renewal in 2026, does this mean I will be out of compliance with my state if I do not finish taking the class by the end of 2025? Ah, well, uh, so your state wouldn't, I wouldn't think your state would look until 2026, uh, just at, based on that cycle, but, um, since the minimum criteria is to have the class taken by the end of 2025, as currently stated, um, you know, if you haven't taken it by the end of 2025, you would, in fact, be out of compliance. Now, whether or not the state would see that until 2026, um, uh, that would depend on when they looked. So. Wow. Jerry, is the first exposure draft proposing an increase? In CE hours? In CE hours? Well, we yeah. are, yeah, we are, you know, proposing CE hours for, you know, the four hour continuing education course for evaluation and fair housing bias. So, um, you know, does that mean that you're going to have to take, uh, you know, instead of 14 hours a year, you're going to have to take uh, 18 hours? No, but it, it does mean you're going to have to take the course every in your two year cycle. Brad, do you want to add anything onto that? Yeah. Nope, I wasn't sure where Jerry was headed so oh. <laughs> initially, so he, he answered it great, you know, as, as I expected. <laughs> okay, um, the education courses that these education, okay, uh, Brad, the education courses that, that education providers would come up with, are, are they all going to be completely uniform or are they all be different? I would expect them to differ between providers, at least somewhat, but all be uniform in that they cover the required content, which is clearly defined in the criteria. Oh. Or in the um, exposure draft, not in the criteria, but it's in the exposure draft, would be in the criteria if adopted. Okay. Uh, I, I have a same question about if you take the seven hour course, does that mean you'd have to take 28 hours plus seven hours now equals 35 hours? So. That's to Jerry's, this is the same thing Jerry just answered. Yes. Um, who, are, are these, uh, Jerry, are these CAP approved courses? And you can explain what CAP is or um, who is gonna be approving these courses? Good question. So certainly we do offer um, course approval program, you know, review and approval of courses that uh, education providers wish to have the uh, AQB review and approve. 
Um, so these courses could certainly go through CAP. Um, it's certainly uh, voluntary, but it does certainly help uh, both with uh, you know, the state regulatory agencies and uh, their uh, understanding that these have been potentially reviewed and approved by CAP. So uh, that course approval program obviously is, uh, you know, we, we do that to uh, aid the state regulatory agencies and the education providers in making the, uh, the approval, course approval process more effective and efficient for them. I Lisa, I, I would like I would like to add, if I may, that yes, they could go through CAP, but they don't have to. States can approve them without them going through CAP. Okay. Brad, if you can just summarize again that difference between the seven hour and four hour requirement, how those relate to one another. I'm seeing several questions in here that are a little confused about the start and end date and how those would work under the proposed criteria. Okay. So the seven hour course uh, is um, a deep dive uh, into uh, fair housing laws and regulations and evaluation bias uh, topics as, as we went over um, earlier in the presentation. Um, the four hour course is designed as a refresher uh, and, and would um, so touch more lightly on the history and, 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 um, and would be more concentrated on um, current events, if you will, recent developments uh, in, in the case studies that are presented and, and with more of a focus on valuation bias uh, in, in case studies. Um, the, uh, so the timelines that we have uh, proposed in the exposure draft is that everyone would have to, all existing credential holders would have to have the course under their belt by the end of 2025. And then after 2025, the uh, four hour course would be part of their ongoing CE cycle. Uh, so they would have to have that four hour course every, every two years uh, within their CE cycle moving forward. Did that? I will let the uh, listeners tell me if I get more questions, then I will know we still need to cover that again. But we had about five questions on this one. Thank you for covering that. Uh, Jerry, why is the AQB proposing a standalone course? Why don't they just propose all of the qualifying education appraisers received to be revised so that the topics evaluation bias and fair housing laws and regulations are intertwined with every topic that the appraiser learns? Great question. And so if we had not proposed a standalone course, in other words, if we had said, sure, go ahead and intertwine the, the information within various courses appraisers may, or candidates may take for QE, for example, then the education providers would certainly have a, a larger, I guess, uh, workload, if you will, to revise all of the courses and then get them reviewed and approved. So we, we recognize that it's possible to do that, but if it was done, it would actually take longer for us to get to the point of getting this very important evaluation bias and fair housing um, laws and regulations education into the appraiser's hands so that they can you know, understand it and start to use it. So we, we really didn't want to go the route of, of taking longer to revise a, you know, a myriad of courses that may be out there. It's much better to have the standalone course to move things forward quickly. Anything to add to that, Brad, or we're good? Good job, Jerry. Good job, Jerry, as always. Good job, Jerry. <laughs> Great. Okay, Brad, question. Uh, I am an old appraiser with a current broker's license. My broker's license has always required fair housing every two years and non-bias training. Would these classes count? Uh, they do not. Uh, again, the, 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 ca the classes... Uh, that would count are those that um, include all of the content um, on um, that, that is in, in the exposure draft um, and would be adopted into the core uh, required curriculum. Um, so, you know, no substitutes um, in that regard. Great. Uh, Jerry, anything to add or good job, Brad? Good job, Brad. <laughs> <laughs> okay, question for you, Jerry. If the course is not CAP approved by the foundation or the AQB, how will it be ascertained that the QE or the CE 
meets the required criteria for fair housing compliance. Yes, if, the, if it's not, if a course is not CAP approved or re reviewed and approved, then certainly the responsibility for review and approval of the course would fall to the state regulatory agency. Again, you know, the CAP program is voluntary and we certainly encourage the use of the CAP program to make things more efficient. But again, education providers can submit directly to their state appraisal boards for review and approval of the courses. Um, Aida, you've been watching this as well. I'm going to ask you, Aida is also helping us manage the webinar today. If you've seen anything fly by that I've missed, no, she's wrote, put a note in her. Nope. Good. Have you? <laughs> Thanks, Lisa. They're kind of coming in and I'm trying to add them to your queue. Um, okay. I think one of the main questions was the confusion and the misunderstanding the, the there's an increase in the CE. So we're getting a lot of questions and variations of that. What is actually, uh, what what is the proposal again? And this is just a reminder that this webinar is recorded and it will be on the foundation's YouTube channel. Um, we did have some latecomers. So I just wanted to remind you, we will have this recording and you can watch it. Um, and we'll also follow up with the link. Great. Thank you, Aida. Uh, I think I have actually covered the majority of the questions that we can answer on the uh, webinar here today. Some of these are a little more in-depth or actually Aida has already taken care of a good number of these behind the scenes here. So we're going to move into um, wrapping the webinar up here, wrapping up the webinar shortly here after we ask you Please, if you have comments, formal comments, do be sure and submit those to the board before March 13th. You can, in the chat box there, you will see a link to click on for the exposure draft and you can uh, open that up or you can always just email us aqb at appraisalfoundation.org. The board is also accepting verbal comments to its virtual public meeting and that will be on March 22nd at 2 p.m. Eastern time. You will also see a registration link in the chat box and you can always check out the foundation's events page and register there for any of these upcoming meetings or webinars. Brad and Jerry, do you have any last words before we sign off here today? Uh, yes, Lisa, I, I would, uh, or I do want to point out for our newer listeners uh, that the real property and personal property criteria are considered living documents in a process that mir mirrors federal rulemaking. The AQB updates documents by exposing all proposed changes for public comment and will often release multiple exposure drafts before changes are adopted in a public setting. These changes are typically voted on many months in advance of becoming effective. Updates have recently been made to the foundation's bylaws to ensure that these practices will always be followed. So thank you for sticking with us, with us through this webinar, and I look forward to getting your comments. Those are great points, Brad. I would just want to add that for every exposure draft released by the Appraisal Qualifications Board, there are multiple avenues for the public to offer feedback. These include during our webinars, public meetings, online during public comment periods, and also through a new online suggestion box, which allows anyone to submit ideas, thoughts, and concerns to the independent boards at any time. Remember, all public comments are carefully reviewed and discussed by board members, and all written comments are posted on the foundation's website. Thank you for tuning in and staying informed. So please be sure to fill out the very quick and brief survey that will pop up as we end the webinar here in just a couple of seconds. This will allow us to focus specifically on issues for you all. We encourage you as always to reach out to us at any time with any questions or any suggestions or any feedback. We're very good listeners. Thank you for being with us and we hope to hear from you.